billion miles from the sun, past Mars and Jupiter, a planet like no other, Saturn, of all the distant worlds, it's the most mysterious and alluring. We visited three times. Pioneer and Voyager offered a passing glimpse. But Cassini came to stay and to astonish. And in the end, a heartbreaking choice to save a world. Let's explore Saturn right now. solar system, beyond the gas giant Jupiter, in a freezing region, far beyond the sun, lies Saturn, a planet made unique thanks to a 45,000 mile wide ring of frozen water. Here, a trillion pieces of ice have been sculpted by gravitational forces into some of the solar system's most stunning vistas. Even from nearly a billion miles away, this planet inspires. You just can't help but wonder what costs that structure. Saturn is a planet of mysteries. Why did this world become so large? What drives its strange weather? And where do the beautiful bright rings come from? Today, our probes are beginning to shed light on these questions, making discoveries which hint that Saturn's true beauty lies beyond its rings, hidden within its extraordinary moons. Some scientists even believe that those moons could hold life. place with no surface on which to stand. Only endless atmosphere. Compared to Earth, Saturn is so alien that it's hard to imagine how it could have grown from the same ingredients. So how did this incredible, mysterious planet come to be? Saturn 
Saturn begins as a tiny, ragged world, tumbling chaotically through space. Just like the inner rocky worlds, it clumps together with other objects to grow. But there is a crucial difference. Saturn is forming far from the Sun. Saturn and Jupiter were two of the first ones to form. They formed at a very unique place in the solar system, what is known as the Snow Line. The Snow Line is the location at which the temperature of the original solar nebula got cold enough for ice to form. And that ice then goes on to form the building blocks for the larger planets that are present further out. As the infant Saturn sweeps through its orbit, it is able to scoop up huge amounts of extra frozen material unavailable to the worlds of the inner solar system. Under the force of gravity, this abundance of ice and rocks collides and combines, helping the young Saturn grow into a giant. Just a few million years after its birth, Saturn has formed into a great ball of rock and ice. So how did this world become the giant planet of gas we know today? The clues to what happened next would be revealed by one of the most ambitious deep space missions ever attempted. identical spacecraft built to explore the solar system's distant worlds. Voyager was like nothing that had come before. It was a tricky, long-duration journey across the solar system and beyond. With intolerable anticipation, the first close-up images of Saturn were finally revealed to human eyes. Tens of thousands of pictures reach Earth. The Voyager probes completely transform our understanding of Saturn. showing in great detail the composition of the upper atmosphere. Almost all of it made out of helium and hydrogen. The very same gases abundant in the early solar system. It's critical evidence in piecing together Saturn's story and its evolution from a rocky world. Just a few million years after the formation of the Sun, Saturn is beginning a radical transformation. Many times more massive than the worlds of the inner solar system, its gravity is powerful enough to draw in hydrogen and helium gas. Saturn got a large core perhaps 20 times the mass of the Earth. That was large enough to cause all that hydrogen and helium gas around it to collapse onto its core. It's a runaway effect. The bigger you are, the faster you grow. 
This is how Saturn earned its title, Gas Giant. Just a few hundred million years after its birth, Saturn is now vast. So big, it could contain 5,000 Earth-sized worlds. Over time, its gas will compress and condense, eventually becoming the second largest planet in the solar system. Voyager probes reveal some of the mysteries of Saturn, but they raise more questions than they answer. What is happening beneath its strange hazy exterior? Does the planet still have a rocky core? And what is powering the massive storm swirling across its surface? Just a few years after Voyager's flyby, planning begins on a new probe loaded with instruments to uncover Saturn's secrets. Building a craft like this is a huge challenge. Tens of thousands of people are involved in the build. There's over 10 miles of wiring in the main harness alone and every wire has to be individually checked. A very complicated process. The construction takes two and a half years. The Air Force launch controller has given a clear to launch. Cassini is one of the heaviest interplanetary probes ever launched weighing in at over six tons. But its huge size complicates its route to Saturn. To be able to launch a spacecraft as large as Cassini, with enough fuel to be able to do meaningful science at Saturn, it can't use up all its fuel simply to get there. So the probe used flybys past other planets to gain velocity. The journey to Saturn will require two trips past Venus, one past Earth, and finally a speed boost from Jupiter. These maneuvers help Cassini reach speeds of over 60,000 miles per hour. But the probe's most difficult moment is yet to come. Once the probe reaches Saturn, it has to stop. This means firing the rocket at the exact right time in the exact right direction for the exact right amount of time. Otherwise, the probe will continue helplessly into the void. Cassini arrives, the images it sends back to Earth are breathtaking. These are the highest resolution images any human had ever seen of Saturn. Thanks to Cassini's powerful instruments, Saturn's billion-year-old mysteries start to become clearer. Peering into Saturn's tumultuous atmosphere produces new insights about the planet's distant past. One of the biggest questions is, what lies within the clouds? Before Cassini, we didn't really know what those clouds were made of. 
Surprisingly, some of the clouds are made of water ice. The discovery of ice clouds, along with the measurements of the gravitational field of the giant planet, hint at what happened to the young rocky ice planet. The data collected by Cassini suggests that Saturn no longer consists of a rocky core surrounded by a vast atmosphere, but rather it is a single object with no distinct boundaries. That core that was presumably there in the beginning has effectively been disintegrated and mixed up with all the other material which were present. So it may be today that the material is still there but is completely distributed within the envelope of Saturn itself. What began as an icy, rocky world is now a fully-fledged gas giant, and within its gaseous atmosphere, incredible mechanisms are at play. Saturn's atmosphere is characterized by many unusual, even bizarre features. Huge weather systems that take on strange forms persisting for hundreds of years. Perhaps none more striking than the formation nicknamed the Giant Hexagon. It's 16,000 miles across. Big enough to swallow almost four Earth-sized objects. But what could be driving this huge planetary weather system? Saturn doesn't have a solid surface anywhere. What powers weather is very different depending on where you find yourself in the solar system. Earth's weather system is largely driven by one thing, the sun. The energy of the sun hits the atmosphere and surface, which then warms up. This heat then, in turn, creates the weather by way of evaporation and wind and other factors. The sun is the great controller of Earth's atmosphere. But in the outer reaches of the solar system, where Saturn lives, sunlight is 100 times weaker. It means some other heat source must be driving Saturn's weather. Something deep within creating huge, complex forms that arise in its atmosphere. As Cassini studies the cloud tops of Saturn, it's able to infer huge amounts about the truly strange world that must lie beneath and the energy source that helps power this planet. Scientists now believe that Saturn's weather is powered from below, from an internal heat source, not by sunlight like here on Earth. Looking deep inside the planet reveals a heat source shaped by extreme pressure. Within huge clouds of water, Cassini records lightning 10,000 times more powerful than any on Earth. This lightning transforms methane gas into enormous clouds of soot. At 5,000 miles deep, the pressure of the atmosphere is 80 times greater than that at the bottom of our deepest ocean. Enough to transform this sooty graphite into diamonds. But 
even these diamonds are likely destroyed by the pressures of Saturn, eventually dissolving. 18,000 miles down, Saturn's heat source is revealed. Here, pressures are so intense that the atmosphere behaves like a liquid metal able to conduct electricity. In this state, molten helium falls like rain. As this strange rain merges with its surrounding material, kinetic energy is released as incredible amounts of heat. It's this extraordinary heat source that helps drive Saturn's weather. Within just a few hundred million years of its birth, Saturn has witnessed great drama. Now, however, it will remain largely unchanged for billions of years. Vast, but still very different from the planet we know today. And in time, its great size will lead to its ultimate iconic transformation. Saturn's rings are what you would call a debris disk. It's a collection of icy particles ranging in size from a speck of dust to a small apartment building. But the sparkling brilliance of Saturn's rings is a mystery. They're so white and purely ice, even though we know they are being constantly bombarded by meteoroids from the outer solar system, which are not white but dark and sooty like charcoal. So why are the rings so bright? Thanks to a series of flybys, Cassini is able to make a startling discovery. The rings are actually much younger than we thought. That means that during the time of the dinosaurs, Saturn didn't have rings. So if the rings are young, where did they come from? Cassini would give us hints that the answer lies not with the planet itself, but with the worlds trapped in orbit around it, Saturn's moons. The surfaces of these moons are like storybooks telling us about the history of how the Saturn system and these moons evolved. Saturn has 62 moons, and they are the debris of planet formation. Their size, their orbit, and even their composition tell us about the details of the environment in which they formed. So it's possible to use the different moons to understand different eras of the evolution of Saturn. As Cassini continues its journey, it reveals many moons made almost entirely out of ice and some of them take on extraordinary forms in and around the rings. Cassini analyzes the ice moons in ever greater detail, and it becomes apparent many of them are made of the same icy material as the rings themselves, which suggests that Saturn's rings may once have been a moon. The satellite system we see around Saturn today is probably not the same it once had in the past. Because if the rings were created by the destruction of one or two pre-existing moons, it means there were moons before that don't exist any longer. of years ago, Saturn 
had an extra moon. Perhaps 250 miles across and formed almost entirely of ice. But this moon is doomed. It's orbiting just too close to resist the immense forces of Saturn's gravity. When it crosses the Roche limit, the point in orbit where Saturn's gravity is strong enough to pull it apart, its fate is sealed. A leading theory suggests that just beyond Saturn's atmosphere, an ice moon approaches close to or even just inside its Roche limit. As Saturn's immense gravitational force pulls it apart, the moon begins to rupture catastrophically. A world ripped apart by its proximity to a giant. trillion tons of ice breaks apart in orbit around Saturn. And thanks to the speed at which this material is traveling, it's likely that in just a few days it spreads out to encircle the great giant. Saturn's iconic ring is now in place. But as Cassini turns its instruments towards it, it sees a single ring transformed. Today, Cassini reveals that Saturn's rings have evolved. This debris now forms a disk wider than Jupiter, yet on average just 30 feet thick. Within, moon-sized chunks of ice orbit the structure clearing great voids, turning one ring into many. But it's as Cassini captures images with the sun directly above the equator, that the most surprising feature of the rings emerges. The rings have a third dimension. What looks completely flat to us from Earth contains ripples and waves caused by interactions between the ring material and the moons. This once tiny world of rock and ice that has seen the most dramatic transformations is today the solar system's greatest jewel. After more than a decade in orbit, Cassini has forever changed our understanding of Saturn. But its mission is far from over because just beyond the rings lies another treasure a tiny world that may hold answers to some of our deepest questions about the possibility of life in the solar system. The ice moon, Enceladus. From far away it looks smooth, but when we look at it up close, we see that those smooth areas contain fractures upon fractures, disrupting the surface. And within the fractures, there are geysers. Cassini discovers that this moon is alive with activity. Its 
giant plumes eject over 500 pounds of ice and water vapor into space every second. Over 13 years, Cassini did 23 flybys. In about a dozen of those, it flew straight through the plumes. Piloted from nearly a billion miles away, Cassini, on its closest flyby, passes just 30 miles from the surface of Enceladus. And what its instruments detect is breathtaking. Cassini finds not only ice and water vapor, but salts, which means they most likely come from an underground ocean, and beneath that ocean, there is rock. And it is there because of Saturn. As Enceladus moves around the planet, its vast gravitational force pulls at the moon, holding it in orbit. But every couple of orbits, another larger moon called Dione draws Enceladus back. This process repeatedly stretches and squeezes its core, warming and melting the ice interior. But it's what Cassini finds next that changes everything. As the plumes are analyzed in ever greater detail, scientists discover complex organic compounds. This means that Enceladus most likely has a hot, liquid, salty, organic-rich ocean. And as far as we know, that's the perfect place for life to evolve. Deep beneath Enceladus' icy shell, hot rock is in contact with water, almost certainly creating hydrothermal vents. On Earth, these types of vents support a multitude of life. And leading theories suggest that these might have been the setting for the emergence of life on Earth. Which makes some wonder if the same thing is happening on Enceladus. And that would truly be the most amazing discovery in the history of science. But for Cassini scientists, the exotic world under the ice of Enceladus is a bittersweet discovery. They know they need to protect Enceladus from contamination from Earth microbes, and Cassini was never sterilized. This means that the scientists have to safeguard against the probe accidentally crashing on Enceladus. Cassini ends its mission in spectacular fashion, making a series of ever closer orbits to study the planet's rings before a final dive into Saturn's atmosphere, a journey from which it will never return. On its way to its final destination, Cassini must cross Saturn's rings. No one knows if the path is clear or if it will collide with the debris of the rings. Cassini survives its approach to Saturn intact and continues towards its demise. Hurtling to its doom, the spacecraft defiantly keeps transmitting its data even as it's breaking up, heroically carrying out its instructions to its dying breath. that had borne witness to some of the greatest dramas in the solar system's history consumes the craft that has given us its remarkable story. journeyed out
out to Saturn to see its beauty up close, to understand its deep history, and explore its rings. But in the end, we were rewarded with something far more profound, early hints of a second home for life. And though it's sad that Cassini is no longer with us, it's left us a tremendous legacy of data that will keep scientists busy for decades to come, an achievement that along with Cassini's very creation, truly represents the best humanity has to offer.